Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics. How you doing? Welcome to the Fantasy MDs Baseball Podcast. Today is Monday, June 8th, 2022. It's our 28th episode already. I'm your host, Dominic Martino, here with my brother, my one of my best friends, you know, somebody that, you know, we just love doing this podcast together. It's been a hit. Matthew Arne, co-host. How you doing, brother? Doing great. Looks like I'm getting ready to go play some baseball, you know. Yeah, right? It looks like you're going to take a couple ABs. The, the White Sox calling you up tonight? Pretty much. You know, I got the word last night. Um, so, you know, pick me up in all all uh, all platforms. All formats, all formats. I play I, I play every position. <laughs> uh, he see, um, unlike uh, Otani on Yahoo, you could switch Matt back and forth. Matt Matt goes uh, yep. pitches, uh, hits, does it all. Yeah, just uh, just call me Thanos. Um, <laughs> Uh, there you go. So um, just a couple of quick things I wanted to just say before we uh, move uh, further into the podcast. One thing I want to correct ourselves on is um, we, we spoke about Jaron Duran in the last episode and we literally recorded the episode like seconds before he got sent down. And we just want to apologize for anyone that, you know, got that information. That's on us. We'll, we'll take the, the blame for that one. And I do want to switch one thing up here, you know, and say this at the beginning instead of the end of the episode while everyone's here. Um, guys, if you like what you're hearing so far, I know we're 28 episodes in. Uh, just ask that you you know you subscribe on youtube um if you like what you're hearing on apple or spotify please take the time and just write a little review little something something for us if you like what you're hearing give us that five star we truly appreciate it just means a lot goes the wrong way uh so with that being said let's do the finger on the pulse as always um today we're gonna do a little uh buy low sell high you know it's getting to that time of year where you need to be making those trades and uh doing those types of things so we figured uh we name a couple of players that we find interesting so far at this point up until the season so uh, I'm going to start off here. I'll do one of mine. Let's start with the buy lows. Uh, I think Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is a prime buy low candidate right now. He's just starting to heat up over the last couple of weeks. He's got three bombs in his last six games. And I, I think he's going to turn that corner here. Um, so on the season, those numbers aren't looking too great. Um, as I pull them up here, uh, bear with me. Um, but you know what Vladdy did last year? Monster hit over 300 with all the bombs. Uh, it was just uh, fantastic. So, so far this year, Vladdy's hitting um, 249. He's got um, 30 ribbies, 13 bombs, 26 runs, and 54 games. So I think some people might uh, see that batting average and be panicked because, you know, he hit 311 last year and um, – the 48 bombs. So some people might be a little bit worried about him. Personally, I'm not. I mean, I don't know if those numbers are going to be as high as last year, you know, because he did play a lot of games in um, those uh, those uh, smaller stadiums, you know, uh, before the they came back to Toronto. So I think with Vladdy here is a good time to uh, go out and um, make a move like that. So now um, if I was going to offer a trade for Vlad, right, I'm going to try and stick to guys that, you know, I'm familiar with and that, that I know. So I'm sorry if it, it might make come off the wrong way but you know i'd be looking to maybe offer you know i always like to do a two for one right i like to try and package up uh, when i'm especially when i'm going for somebody high like that right so maybe if you picked up a carlos carrasco at the beginning of the year picture like that picture that's kind of over overperforming that you know looks great so far you pair that with like um uh, you kind of got to go high end, a little higher end on that bat. Uh, maybe like um, Matt, help me out here. Anybody you would uh, throw out there for Vladdy if you had to like throw a bat out there? Somebody trying to you know entice that deal. And once again, I'm not Ooh. talking dynasty. I don't think you can get Vlad in dynasty right now. I'm talking about a redraft. You know, if you're just trying to go out there, trying to make a move, you know, get yourself a big time bat. You know, like I said, maybe package Carrasco with like um, you know, another type of bat. All right, I throw this out there. Uh, maybe like a CJ Crone, and you could actually go a little bit lower than Carrasco. Then you know, maybe you go um a CJ Crone and somebody a little bit because I'm not I'm not giving up CJ Crone and Carrasco for Vladdy right now. Even though you could offer that if you really wanted to get that deal done right now, just uh, aim a little bit lower than that. Then maybe maybe somebody a little bit lower than Carrasco, package them with the CJ Crone type. Just guys that you got a little bit later in drafts this year, you know, that are are doing all right right now, and you get yourself a nice guy like Vladdy going in. I'd probably just package, you know, somebody that's bouncing back. And I mean, I can go into my cell if you want. Yeah, then, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's do it. Um, And that'd be like a Jose Berrios. Okay. You know, it's a name. So, like, that's the other thing, too. Like, so you got to realize when you're selling guys, right, if a, guy, a big name is coming back and, like, looks like they're doing something, even though, you know, you know they're not going to do it like Berrios, dump them. Throw, package them in. Package them in with some, like, like what Dom said, a crone. And you can get rid of your dumpster fire pitcher that's just going off for a couple games and get the player you really need, like Vladdy. I mean, personally, if I'm a Vladdy owner, I'm holding out because I drafted him so high in that draft capital. But, I agree there. <laughs> but 
nine out of 10 times they had to pick him with the top five picks and they're probably hurting. So they could be in a position where they need to move him. So at that point, that's where, you know, this trade could be great. Crone is like a, a first baseman. And then, you know, you're packaging a little Berrios for the namesake. Now oh, this guy's an idiot. He's going to trade him. Now, nah, you know, he's going to just blow up and explode. And his flanges are just going to snap. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, uh, I, I agree. I agree there. Um, Jose Berrios, that last outing, um, I believe he went out there and struck out like it was 10 or 12. Um, I'm actually going to fact check myself on that because I know that I was watching that last outing. And man, like when Jose Barrios is on, his stuff is great. But I, I just don't think he's that, that consistent. I'm actually wrong. I it got it right here. Seven innings, 13 Ks. I, I shorted him one. I apologize, Mr. Barrios. And that was a revenge game, actually, against uh, the former uh, Minnesota Twins there. So it was seven innings, 13 Ks, picked up the win, 2-5-7 ERA and an 0 whip. So now you can go out there. You got a little bit of um, juice behind uh, selling them there. So uh, let's do another one here. You know what, Matt? Uh, we'll move over to the sell highs for a little bit, and I'll throw out there somebody I'm looking to sell high on. And I think I mentioned it actually one of our last episodes, and that's Mr. Taylor Ward. I'm actually an owner of his in a few leagues, and I kind of been throwing some feelers out there. Haven't gotten any like big time uh, bites on him, but you know he's been hitting great this year. I know he just uh, went to the IL, so you know um, there is that, but I believe it's supposed to be a minimum stay, and I believe that information's out there, so you can always uh, throw that out there, but so far, Mr. Taylor Ward on the season is hitting 333. He's got 10 bombs. He's got 26 RBIs, and you know, he's just been getting it done. He's probably going to make that all-star team, in uh, my opinion. You go out there, and, and you sh- I-, I would shoot high. Matt, that's you know, we were talking about Vladdy. You keep it going. I'll package Taylor Ward and Carlos Carrasco, and I'll shoot that at the Vladdy owner. Once again, that's for a redraft league. And I'll see what he says, because you know what? I don't think Taylor Ward keeps it up. And he also has 30 runs. I just did want to throw that out there, 30 runs in the steal as well. Um, so, you know, I mean, with Taylor Ward, uh, go out there, shoot. I would shoot high. He's somebody I'd be shooting high for. Uh, whatever you're lacking in, you know, like I said, package him um, with like a Carrasco type, for like a Vladdy. If you need an arm, um, who would I be looking at if I needed an arm with Taylor Ward? Uh, I'll tell you this. Matt, how would you feel? Um, once again, maybe not not in a dynasty league. I know you're a Pablo Lopez owner. How would you feel if somebody offered you a Taylor Ward for Pablo Lopez? Eesh, that's a toughie. I yeah, mean, right. So I mean, I probably do it because yeah, like right. Pablo. I think that's close. I think that's I, close. I like Pablo Lopez. A lot. I mean, I have him yeah. everywhere. I think the thing with Pablo Lopez is just injury. I'm not worried about if he's ever a good pitcher or not. The guy's a, a super talented arm. It's just a matter if he can stay on the field. And I, I, I'm going to go out there and say, I think he gets it done this year. I think he stays on the field. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he is too so far. I'm going to knock on like wood like 19 times. I might kiss it later. <laughs> yeah, right? Do I got anything over here? Yeah, don't jinx me like that. Knock. I think that's a fair trade. I mean, it's not like I'm really willing to, to, to give up t- – me being the Pablo Lopez guy, but if somebody yeah, yeah. Float, if somebody was dumb enough to do it, I'd definitely do it. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So Matt, you got another uh, sell high there for me? Yeah, uh, sell high is probably going to be Anthony Rizzo. So okay. he was like probably the number one waiver wire pickup going in the year, and this is what really makes him a sell high is the fact that he's crushing the ball right now, even though he's got no batting average. He, he literally <laughs> he literally looks like Nelson Cruz out there and Joey Gallo, but um, you know, essentially. He's putting up the the counting stats, which really counts for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people are hurt and they need to stay down. And if you have one guy that really just has really bad batting average but can give you the counting stats right now, he's probably worth it. He can probably get you somebody. Like, I mean, personally, I'd package him in a package to go get go out and go get Bobby Bobby Witt right now, who's my buy low. Um, he's finally on that on that men to go high. People are probably disappointed because of the hype and he's not living up to it right now. But I mean, it's only the end of May, the beginning of June, so like. I think right now he's about to get catch that stride. And I think this is probably the perfect time to kind of pounce and go after him. And I'm not really like too keen on, on uh, Rizzo that much. I mean, yeah, he's a Yankee and whatnot, but I mean, for fantasy outlook, I'm not, I, I'm not a fan. I don't even think it's going to last, but that's just me. Fair enough, Matt. I'll chime in there. See, I don't know if I'm super there with you on Rizzo and the fact that you might be able to sell high. Like, you see those counting stats, man, and they're just terrific. The 14 bombs with the 38 RBIs. And he just chipped in four steals as, as well so far. And he he's done that over the years a couple of times where he's chipped in some uh, nice deal numbers. He's also on a little, I believe it's a six-game or five-game hitting streak. So, you know, it's only uh, one hit in each of those games. So it's not like he's done too much. But Anthony Rizzo's kind of like a mystery to me, man. You know, that batting average has fallen off over the last three years. And, I mean, I think being on the Yankees, those counting stats, 
are going to stay where they are. I think, you know, he's going to hit 30 plus bombs with, uh, you know, that uh, short porch over there and get you the hundred RBIs, but man, it, he could, he could wind up hitting 230 and it would just be really disappointing to, you know, see a guy like Anthony Rizzo hit 230. So, I mean, if you can go out there and you could, uh, you know, get like Matt said, you know, some, somebody like a Bobby Witt, you know, who, who we think is going to turn it around or like, um, uh, I'll give you another, for instance, let me see who else I would be. If, Cause I actually, as an Anthony Rizzo owner, I'll tell you what I would kind of be looking at myself, um, to go out there and get for him. Um, I'll tell you this, maybe like a, a guy that's, um, <laughs> you know, a, a guy that I do like, and he's, is always hurt, but like a Clayton Kershaw type, maybe go talk to the Clayton Kershaw owner. If you need a, you know, if you need a pitcher, cause you, I don't, I don't know how much realistically you're going to, you're going to get for Anthony Rizzo right now with that low batting average, but you could definitely go out there and shop feelers. Uh, Matt, just to buy a uh, vibe off of you with, um, with Bobby Witt there. I think Bobby Witt's going to take off. I think it's really coming because once again, he's another guy, the counting stats are kind of there for the kid. You know, it's, it's not like he hasn't, um, hasn't produced in those areas because I believe he has um, eight steals so far in the year. I'm going to get you his uh, his full line there. So uh, on the year, uh, Bobby Witt, it's eight steals and seven bombs. He's got 28 RBIs and 27 runs. Uh, he's still been hit in third in the order every day. Uh, he went uh, two for four today, actually, uh, with two runs. Um, he hit a home run on June 3rd with three RBIs. He stole a base on June 4th. I think he's going to start to find that consistency and get it going right now. Um, but see, I think he's somebody that you can get sneaky cheap right now you know maybe not in dynasty or redraft but i mean i'm sorry not you, you can't get him for cheap in redraft but uh jesus matt i'm just stumbling right now stumbling. It's all good. It's all stumbling. Good. you could get him cheap in redraft you can't get him cheap in dynasty there you go got it out there you go. <laughs> so you know in, in, in redraft right now i'd be honestly just low balling you know i, I love apparently carlos grass was my guy today that i'm looking in a trade but hey you throw a guy like that out there you know somebody you picked up off the waiver wire you know just trying to give you examples here of you know what i would throw out there and maybe the bobby Witt owner just holds on you and and just says here take them and you wind up with a guy in the second half that i think is possibly gonna break out break out um matt i'm talking a lot over here and you could go buy low sell high wherever you want to go i know we got a bunch of names so you take your pick all right well you know what here's a guy that i actually think is worth it and it's somebody that i've said to draft everywhere uh in the beginning of the season and that's Corey knebel yeah um, there you go so i mean i know everybody's hurting for a closer and you're probably like really knebel because he's playing like complete butt like sorry i don't we don't curse on this podcast um but I mean, to be honest, he's gonna get the he's getting the opportunities at least. And you know what? It's one of those things where I stand by that point where if a closer's getting the opportunity for the save, you might as well keep rolling him out there. He's he hasn't lost a job. They paid him to come in there. He's the only guy they got too, because I mean Sir Anthony Dominguez is absolutely atrocious. That's the other team I'll be closing for if uh you know Yeah, right. You got Canable. a Phillies jersey over there too. They, they probably, probably need somewhere in the closet. <laughs> and, you know. But I mean, he's got 10 saves on the year. And, you know, to start the season, he was killing it. He's just been on a little bit of a slump. He's had a bunch of tough matchups. I mean, it's not like that division's easy or anything either. Um, but he had two saves last week. So, like, that that's a big keen sign right there. And probably you could probably package like a lower end closer and um and, and uh whatnot to I mean uh, yeah, lower end closer that's performing now like one of the guys we mentioned last week, and then like a little Batsky, like, like Anthony Rizzo, and you can get pick yourself up a top 10 closer, which if you're hurting, you're probably happy about that. I mean, not for nothing. I packaged two guys, so that no problem. Yeah, I, I hear you there, Matt. I mean, I definitely love throwing a closure in the mix here. I definitely love that. And I do think Canable bounces back and finds some some rhythm at the moment. But um, I mean, I, I don't I don't know if, if I'm personally going out there and trading for him. Uh, but, but you know, but then again, you know the type of guy I am. I'm the type of guy that I, I'm I'm fine with uh taking the crumbs off the waiver wire with uh when it comes to closers. But hey, once again, that's just me. Like I like the names that we kind of been throwing out there over the past couple weeks, like the Paul Seawalls, the the Tanner Rainies and the guys like that. Um, even I'm going to throw this guy out there, even though he's highly owned, but Gregory Soto, man, it's been a fine for anyone that's been able to, to pick him up. The Detroit closers, uh, the, the Detroit Tigers closer. He's just been really good this year, man. You know, and I know we think he's like 70% owned, but I would go out there and snag him in any league he's available in. Uh, but Canable, I think he does, you know, I think he's a definitely a stronghold. Um, if you can go get him out there on the cheapy cheapies, definitely throw your feelers and uh, see what's out there on him. 
Uh, I'm going to throw out another name for you guys here. Um, let's go with another buy low. And it's uh, one of my personal guys. And, you know, I got him in my uh, keeper league with my first pick this year, first pick overall. And he's kind of underperforming. And that's uh, Lucas Giolito. Uh, man, uh, that he was dealing with a few different injuries at the beginning of the year. I believe then he got COVID. So, you know, it's been kind of a, a, a long stretch for him here trying to figure things out, right? So I'm going to give you his numbers on the year. And then we're going to do a little bit more of a deep dive on the type of pitch he's been over the last few years right so with Lucas Giolito on the year he's got 48 innings he's got 62 K's which you like to see four wins a 3-5-4 ERA but that one four whip is just like it's killer right so you know you go to the, the Lucas Giolito owner and you say man that controls bad you know that looks like the, the ERA is going to go up because of that and, stand, and you kind of just you know you do your little sweet talking but then in the back of your head you kind of keep in mind that over the last what is it here how many years has he uh, had a good whip in a row. It's uh, last three years. So since 2019, giolito has been a great whip guy. It's a 106 whip in 2019, a 103 whip in 2020, and then last year, a 110 whip. So he's kind of known for that, you know, having that good control, right? And then even last year, uh, Giolito with a 3.53 ERA, 178 Ks, uh, 201 strikeouts, and once again, a 110 uh, whip. He's just a guy that I think is just going to bounce back, have a monster second half. If you look at the splits from last Last year, he totally uh, started off bad, you know, and then in the second half wound up uh, just killing it down the stretch. So definitely somebody I'm looking to uh, buy low on at the moment. If I had to throw an offer out there, uh, let's let's find some different guys to talk about. I feel like I've been throwing the same names at you. So let's find some other names. If I'm looking to buy Giolito right now, right, uh, maybe you go out there and you offer. Um, let's see, how's, how's this guy been on the year? Uh, he's been pretty good, so maybe not him. You know what? And this once again, we're talking redraft. We're not really talking keeper dynasty stuff right now, right? So we're talking redraft, right? So it's just one year. So don't don't get it misconstrued when I say this. Throw out a Wanda Franco, right? Uh, you, you see, and you see, see, we see what the, see what gets said there, right? Because I, now now if you're um if you're looking to go for a pitcher, I'm assuming you're gonna have a little bit of excess on the bats. So you know, that's a guy in, in a, a one year league. I would throw out a Wanda Franco for Giolito because you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I don't think this is the year for Wanda Franco. Um, you know, uh, they're saying he might return next week with that quad, but he's only got four bombs, four steals, 270, 19 ribbies. You know, super young. So maybe he uh, figures it out next year. So the, that's just my thoughts on uh, Giolito there. Matt, anyone else you want to hit here, or you kind of want to keep get a pushing? What do you think? You know what's funny? What's up? Go ahead. I legit just made a trade for Bobby Witt and Giolito in the same trade. Oh, wow. Did you? Yeah. It's there you huge. go. So speak to the people. I mean, so here's the deal. It's one of those moments where I just sold a bunch of names, right? Oh, go for it. Go for it. So I threw out Justin Turner from the Los Angeles Dodgers. I threw out Luis Severino and Mike Clevenger. Ooh, okay. And personally, I think I'm going to win that trade. And the reason why is because Giolito's a Giolito. Bobby Wood is gonna gonna yeah, go yeah. nuts. And quite honestly, Severino's over over the total year stats look great. But if you go by his, I like, do like Sevy though. Sevy's great, but Sevy's been getting blown the hell up, and he's not been consistent. Yeah. So I'm not really a big fan. And honestly, Clevenger's flanges are really just the one that's really just. Yeah, he's. He, I think I think the fact that you were able to move a Justin Turner and a Mike Clevenger. I mean, you know what? Severino's the sacrifice in that trade. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, a, it's a great sacrifice to get back a, a, a Lucas Giolito and Bobby Witt, I believe you said. Yeah. Oh, I, I, that's that's a steal. In my book, that's at least an A minus, at minimum A minus. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, what if I lose Sevy, become Sevy? Yeah. I'm wrong. But then, but then I think Giolito outweighs that. I think Giolito is going to give you more. He's going to give you more innings, more strikeouts, um, and just give you more value than either Clevenger or Severino. Maybe he, like, can bind. He might match both of their innings, Giolito, on the year. Exactly. Just my and have, opinion. And have less struggles along the way. Yeah, and then Bobby Witt for uh, Justin Turner. I'm going to be honest. I, I don't. I'm not a huge Justin Turner guy anymore. I think he's getting old, and the bat speed has gone down. He just can't catch up to the ball the way he used to. He went from a 300 hitter to you know he can't even. What is he even over 250 at the moment? I don't think so. Just somebody I'm not really really that high on. You know, um, at the moment. So I think that's a great trade for uh, <laughs> great trade for you there, my brother. Yeah, and I feel like you know what? It's a reasonable offer too. It's not outrageous. Oh yeah, no, so, not at all. 
So one last guy, and then I think yeah, we ahead, have to move on, on to the news because we've been boring everybody. With yeah, Tyler I know, I know, high. I know. But you know what, though? I think it, it's just the kind of talk you need to hear. At least we're throwing out names for people mm-hmm. to, like, you know, get in their head and uh, ideas of what to do. Because I just feel like when you're doing a buy low, sell high segment, you got to kind of get in there. But who do you got for us, Matt? So there, there's this man called Boba Shit that everybody was drafting, like, you know, number Boba two. Boba Shit. Um, and I know somebody has probably taken victory laps here. But – um. Honestly, I think he's going to bounce back. I mean, the kid, that kind of talent, that be, being that young, and personally, um, that kind of performance last year doesn't just die off. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I don't even. How it was a couple of years in a row though. He was pretty good. No, yeah, at least I uh, had like a half a season because you know last year was a yeah, yeah. whole crazy season. True, um, true, true. So I mean, personally, I just think the kid's going to have a outright breakout. And I mean, it's not like his stats are bad. It's really just like if his batting average was just a smidge bit higher and he had five more steals, I think everybody would be singing his praises and he'd be worth that like number two, number three overall pick. But he's not doing it, so this is why he's a buy low candidate, right? So right now he has 39, 34, and 259, right? I personally think that he's probably going to bounce back and get on get on par. So, I mean, per, I, I'm going to throw out somebody of value at least, right? So Brandon Rogers, who's dual position at eligibility. Yeah, and nice, he's been mashing. He's, he's been, been mashing, mashing. But Brandon Rogers has never been able to I agree. Know, tie it in for a whole season. So he's a, I agree. a waiver wire pickup, not for nothing. Yeah. And you dump him for something high, not just him, though. Not just him. You got to throw an arm in there, too, probably. Once again, Matt, should I just say, should I just say Carlos Carrasco? Is that the guy? He <laughs> could the be guy? the guy. I mean, another <laughs> name would be Blake Snell. Thank you, Matt. See, you saved me from just keep Carlos Carrasco in the whole podcast. A Blake, a Blake Snell or a, or a James Callion. I mean, James Callion. Oh, James to tie on. Yeah, that's Tyon. a good one. Again, I messed that kid's name up. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Shots are on me. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's one of those things where I just think that, like, one of those two guys you picked up off waivers, you know, they're performing right now. Well, Snell isn't, but it's a name. Yeah. And, and Tyone is performing. So you can dump off two guys who invested zero draft capital in and pick up a guy that was has high draft capital yeah, yeah. and somebody that's going to bounce back and perform for you. So, yeah, so yeah, that's I hear you. I'm going to follow you up that, Matt, here. And I'm going to say from 2019 to 2021, here's Bo Bichette's combined stats, right? He's got 1,030 play, uh, plate appearances, which is 959 at-bats, 171 runs, 45 bombs, 146 ribbies, 33 steals, and he hit uh, 301 over that time. So, I mean, like, dude, it's just a, a amazing, like, you know, what he's been able to do so far in, you know, the big leagues. And if you average that out per 162, um, it would be 118 runs, uh, 31 bombs, 101 RBIs, and 23 steals. I mean, he's not playing 162 games, but hey, we'll take those down, you know, stats down a little bit. Hey, if Bobachet, you know, gives you 100 runs with uh, 25 bombs, uh, 90 RBIs, uh, you know, 18 steals, and he hits 300. I mean, that's the guy that we all expected him to be. That's what I think he is going forward. He's 24 years old. I think a lot of guys on the Blue Jays are taking some lumps, trying to adjust to being back home full time. But I think guys like him and Vlad are total by lows. I agree with everything Matt said there. Um, And with that being said, uh, let's. So we're just going to hit the news and notes here, guys, now. Um, We're going to start off with uh, Carlos Correa. Good news on him. He's uh, back from the COVID IL starting today. Then we got uh, Mr. Tyler O'Neill. Came off the IL yesterday, went two for five. Uh, Make sure he's back in your lineups. Then uh, Shane Boz. We talked about him the other day, but, you know, he's got an official date. I believe it's Friday. He's going to be back against the Twins. Uh, Make sure he's activated in all your lineups as well. uh, He's just a monster. He struck out 10 over uh, four innings last time out there in the minor leagues. Uh, bad news. Uh, Mike Trout, uh, grind tightness day to day. Uh, those angels cannot catch a break at all. Uh, then we got Pete Alonzo. He got hit on the hand the other day, but I believe the x-rays came back negative. So he's just day to day for now. Might miss a couple games this week. Uh, Tim Anderson. Uh, he's got that grind injury. He's supposed to start a rehab assignment next week. If everything stays on the up and up and there's no setbacks, uh, Steven Strasburg, uh, the, he's coming back, man. Looks like he's going to start this Thursday. Um, I don't know what to expect from him, guys. Uh, I mean, I'd activate him in almost any league, though, because you know what? Starting pitching is just uh, kind of getting tougher and tougher as it goes on. Maybe he's got something left in the bag. Uh, Joe Ryan, Minnesota Twins, he's going to need at least one rehab start, apparently, um, after returning from uh, the COVID IL. Uh, I think he had some lingering symptoms there, so uh, he'll be back sooner than later, but they're gonna, he's going to need one more rehab start. 
Uh, Clayton Kershaw should be back this weekend against the Giants from that little back thing. I believe he's supposed to throw a bullpen uh, maybe Thursday, I think it was. And then if that goes well, he will uh, start this weekend. Mr. Alex Cobb to the IL with a hamstring tightness. This guy's just been a complete and total bust, man. I know a lot of guys were uh, high on him uh, coming back, um, going to the San Francisco Giants. And, you know, I mean, they've been fixing pitchers uh, recently, but looks like Alex Cobb can't catch a break, man. So once again, he's uh, to the IL with a hamstring tightness. Jesus Lazardo of the Miami Marlins. He is still not throwing from that forearm strain, so that's absolutely horrible news. I think at this point he's a safe drop. Um, if you got if you were hurting right now and you were holding him, uh, you could cut him. You could cut bait with a Jesus Lazardo. I don't think he's going to be back anytime soon. Uh, then we got uh, Eduardo. Eduardo Rodriguez of the Detroit Tigers. He's going to start his rehab assignment this weekend. Maybe he needs a couple and then he gets back up there for the Tigers. Um, he could be interesting, you know, a big strikeout guy, you know, decent ERA, high whip. But um, he might be back sooner than later. Travis Darno for the Atlanta Braves. He's out with a forearm strain. He got uh, hit with a the pitch there the other day. So, I mean, he's missed the last couple games. Um, I don't know if he's going to hit the IL or not. There wasn't really uh, too much news on that. Uh, Willie Adamas is back today off the IL, so get him activated in your lineups. Then we got uh, Seiya Suzuki, Chicago Cubs. He can be activated this weekend from that finger injury. Uh, man, he started off like a house on fire, then he really started slowing down. Uh, but make sure you get him back in your lineups. You know, I think uh, he's got some upside here. Uh, this one was actually kind of new uh, when I just saw it. Starling Marte is likely to hit the IL with a quad injury. Um, they're doing a bunch of testing on him, so that's a bad break for the Mets and the uh, Starling Marte owners. Um, I would be looking to replace him ASAP, to be honest. And uh, we got a couple of names uh, here in the waiver wire segment that you could possibly do that with. So, you know what? That's what we're going to hit. Uh, let's start with a bat here. Um, somebody that you could, uh, let's see. I know he's got multi-position eligibility. Does he have outfield? We're about to find out. Um, and well, that's uh, Ezekiel Duran. Um, he's a young prospect, man. And he's come up and he's uh, hitting the ball hard so far. Uh, no, he unfortunately doesn't have outfield eligibility on Yahoo, but he does have second base and shortstop eligibility. He's 15% owned on Yahoo. Once again, Ezekiel Duran, Texas Rangers. So far in the year, he is a six for 16, hitting 375, three runs, a home run, an RBI. Uh, I believe he was killing it down in uh, the minors. I'm going to see if I can get you those stats too. But um, second base and shortstop, I know second base has been uh, tough this year. He's definitely a guy that you could throw out some feelers on, uh, you know, just throw, pick him up and uh, see where things go. Uh, like I said, very, very under-owned at the moment. Yeah, so in the minors, he was actually killing it, Ezekiel Duran. He was hitting 317. He had seven bombs. He had 31 RBIs. He had seven steals. Um, he also had 34 runs in 45 games over 183 at bats. I absolutely love those numbers. Now, once again, guys, it's been a tough translation guys, even like Bobby Witt are having a little bit of tough time, but you know, there are some dudes excelling. I would totally, uh, throw, throw a shot in Ezekiel Duran. Once again, Texas Rangers, second base shortstop, 15% owned on Yahoo. Oh yeah. Uh, any thoughts on the kid? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, he's definitely worth a speculative ad at best. I mean, the way he kind of came up hot, he could be like um, Royce Lewis, you know, and he's on a better yeah. organization than the twins. So he might actually stay up. Um, so oh God, don't, don't get me started on that was disappointing for Royce Lewis. Yeah. So, I mean, personally, I mean, he's, he's at least worth the speculative, especially at second base where there's really yeah. nobody performing and anybody that you pretty much drafted high, like a Jorge Polanco, who we were both high on has kind of not been so great. You know, if you're heating struggling, up a little bit, heating up a little bit, a little bit, a little but bit, still, little bit. <laughs> not what you drafted him for the capital wise. Yeah, you know, I hear that. So, you know what? You can kind of flex him independent on the matchup and things like that, and kind of, you know, at least make up for the poor play by the guy you drafted pretty high until he kind of bounces back, which he will. But, you know, it's just somebody that you have in mind for, yeah, yeah. you know, a pickup. Now, we can talk about somebody else here. And thank, that's uh, Frank. I'm going to mess his name Do up. Do you want me to help you out? Or are you going to go for it? Um, Schwid Dell. Oh, wait, just if you just say it all at once, you got it. Swindell, Swindell, you got it. Swind there we go. Frank the Swindell, Schwind. Chicago Cubs. Swing, swing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we like to have fun around here, guys. We have fun on this podcast, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this. But I mean, yes, sir. Ultimately, I thought he was going to be pretty decent coming into the season. I had him pretty, pretty high up. I mean, for first baseman fit. It was my 15th ranked first baseman coming into the year. Because nice. um, he did have a pretty good year last year in 242 at-bats. 
He had 44 runs, 14 bombs, 43 ribbies, two steals, and batting 326, right? So, I mean, I, I figured some of that would have carried over in the last year. Um, and he started off real slow, but, I mean, I'm really not mad at the stats per se because he's on the Cubs, right? He mm-hmm. has 20 runs on the year, eight bombs, 30 ribbies, and batting 239. And that's the part I'm, I'm actually really disappointed about. But here's the reason why we tell him to pick him up. I'm sorry to go through the stat by stat. But this week, this last week, he's, bat, he's got four runs, two bombs, six ribbies, and batting 333. Now, that's a waiver wire pickup right there, okay? That's somebody you're like, let's go. So I'm pretty excited to say, hey, maybe he's finally bouncing back. Maybe we're going to see what we did last year. It only takes a couple a couple of, um, couple of, games in a row for somebody to start getting hot and start keeping it going, and I think he could do it. I'm not saying he's going to be a long-term one, but he's somebody that you could probably ride the wave with for quite some time. Yeah, well, here's my thoughts on Big Frank, man. Like you said, he showed out last year, and he absolutely killed it, you know, with those 14 bombs in 326. Now, personally, I didn't expect him to hit 326 again. But like you said, hey, if he could hit 260 with that power, you know, he's going to be, a, a, you know, rostered widely, you know, on every team, right? So this year he kind of didn't do that. But, you know, slowly, slowly starting to show, you know, the signs of what he did last year again. Now, I think if he, if he keeps the batting average in the 240, 250 range with a little bit of power, you know, it could be very useful, especially say a Suzuki comes back and, you know, the Cubs maybe get it, get it rolling again a little bit like they were at the beginning of the season. I could see Schwindel, you know, being good for uh, fantasy owners, you know. Now, uh, again, on the year, he's got eight bombs, he's got 30 ribbies, 20 runs. Runs, you know, he's he's chipping in. Like we said, that 239 batting average isn't really helping. But I, I think in this kind of climate, you know, it's not really killing you, killing you. So I think he's somebody who can go out there and own. He's a little bit highly owned on Yahoo. He's 41% owned. But, you know, if you need a first baseman right now, you're hurting. I say you go out there and you give him the shot. Once again, at this point in the year, we're kind of giving you names that you don't really have to hold these guys forever. You know, it's kind of just see where things go for a week or two and then you, you adjust accordingly, right? So we're going to throw out a, another bat here for you, you know, as, as Yankee fans, you know, somebody that uh, we've uh, grown to love over the years, and that's Mr. Gio Urshela. You know, I feel like he's not getting a lot of love since uh, the trade, you know, but he's uh, he's doing his normal Gio Urshela thing, right? He's uh, hitting 274 on the year. He's got 21 runs. He's got five bombs. Uh, he's got 23 RBIs. Uh, he's eligible at third base and shortstop on Yahoo, and he's also 42% owned. So he's somebody you can go out there and, you know, uh, add if you like. Uh, uh, the Minnesota Twins, I think they're, uh, you know, they're, they're doing pretty good. And with uh, Carlos Correa coming back, I believe that's going to give uh, Gio more opportunities in that lineup, you know, to um, uh, produce a little bit more. And I just think uh, he's somebody you can go out there and uh, add if you need um third baseman. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not mad at the stats on the year. I'm not mad at his performance over the last couple of weeks. Um, the fact that he's even hitting the high batting average, and I was talking about this on Tuesday, and that's – if you're getting a good batting average off the off the waivers, you're hitting a home run on your spare days. And if you're getting crumbled, crushed with injuries, like I always am, <laughs> you know, you just you just pick him up. And you know, he's one of those guys that's at least not killing you for the week. And you know what? If they chip in a couple counting stats along the way, you know, you know, thank them even more. You know, set them a fruit basket or something. I don't know, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what the thing the thing with uh you know Gio is man, he's just a very consistent guy. So if you need a, you need someone that's gonna give you a good batting average, you can grab him. If you need someone that's gonna give you a little bit more power, you grab a uh, big Frank there. Uh, from the Chicago Cubs. So a last bat here in uh, the Wave of Wire segment, that's going to be someone we talked about at the beginning of the year, and, you know, he slowed down a little bit, but he's heating back up again, and that's uh, Connor Joe of the Colorado Rockies, you know, first base and outfield eligible on Yahoo. So once again, we did sneak a little outfield there in there if you need a little replacement for Starling Marte. Now, Connor Joe does steal a couple bases. He is no um, he's no Starling Marte, but he's got three bags on the year. And um, on June 7th, he went two for four with two runs, a bomb, and a steal. And he's been hitting leadoff consistently for the Colorado Rockies, you know, on the year, he's in 267. He's got 30 runs. It's a lot of runs, 14 RBIs, uh, five bombs, you know, and as I mentioned, the three steals, 51% owned on Yahoo. I think Connor Joe's a great pickup, especially hitting uh, half his games, of course. Yep. I think he's this year's Tyler Naquin. Yeah, that, oh, that was actually, I like that. That's a good call. You Very know, good like, call. You just ride the wave, and when, yeah. when, when he takes an outright dump, you drop him, and then when he starts heating up again, you pick him up again. The, yes, the only sir. difference between him and Naquin <laughs> is he hits in Colorado. So there you go. You know, it's something that's probably going to be a little bit, you'll probably get a little bit more and a lot more power out of him. So, you know what? Um, 
I mean, I'm, I'm not mad if you pick him up, especially with all this uh, injury stuff going on. I, yes, sir. Sorry, I keep complaining about it, but I mean. <laughs> nah, the in, I think the injury bug is, you know, bad for everybody, you know, this my year. I think the in, injuries are at an all-time high. So that's why, you know, guys, come to listen to the MDs every week and get these, you know, names for you that are going to help, you know, uh, help your lineups. So uh, let's move in. Matt, I'll throw the name out there, but I want you to take the lead on this one. This is one of your boys that you were actually really high on coming into the year, and he's looking pretty good, Mr. Cal Quantrill, starting pitcher, Cleveland uh, Guardian. I almost said Indians. Oh, you can say Indians. That's the real team name. <laughs> you know, there's only been about like 85 movies about it. But, <laughs> hey, you're not wrong there. Yeah. But uh, what about your boy Cal, Matt? What are your thoughts on him on the year so far? So, I mean, Cal, Cal isn't doing what he was doing last year, but he's at least not, you know, like outright blowing up, which is good. Um, and he's never been a strikeout guy, which is which is something that, you know, he's it's carried over into this year, but he's doing pretty well. So, I mean... The, the ERA is under four. It's in the mid threes on the year. It's at a three, five, six. He's got a one nineteen whip, three W's and 36 K's through 60 innings. So, I mean, a little over half, which isn't great, but you know what? There's some games where he's just super electric and he, he throws 10 K's. And then there's some games where he gets like one, but again, same thing with batting average is with ERA. If you can pick up a, and stream a, a kit, a pitcher like this, that's going to be able to, scoop you up and and get you a couple counting stats like some k's possibly get you the w since you know he doesn't like to give up runs and then give you a low era that's it okay in my book just 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 how i look at it. and honestly too the reason why i'm so high on him coming into the year is because of the potential the kid has you know he, he was a good prospect he showed up last year because he had under he had a sub three era in 149 innings um 289 and he had 121 k's with eight w's when a 118 whip. So the the whip is kind of on par with his year year numbers. The ERA is most likely going to come down and he's probably going to get you a couple more Ks coming once he starts getting that rhythm. So I feel like, you know what, this could be a little sneaky sneak pickup right here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm going to agree with you on the fact that 53% uh, owned. Yeah. I, I like, I like Cal Quantrill on the year. You know, he's kind of like you said, suppressing runs. The, the whip isn't killing you. Right. Strikeouts aren't great, but you know what, guess what? He goes against Oakland on June 12th. So if anything, he's at least a stream for this week, guys. Uh, Matt, I think, he, I think you covered your boy pretty good there. Um, I just wanted to mention he's a uh, he's 27 years old. So, you know, it's kind of, it's going to be one of his prime years, at least hopefully, you know, so uh, definitely go out there and a snag Cal for at least a start this week against uh, Oakland on June 12th. Um, he's 53% owned as Matt said. Um, so moving on, uh, I want to talk about uh, a guy that I've uh, went out of my way to pick up in a lot of leagues here, and that's uh, Mr. Jeffrey Springs. I believe we spoke about him once on this podcast already, but hey, man, he's still only 50, 57% owned on Yahoo, and I think that's criminally low. Uh, on the year, he's uh, got 45 strikeouts and 44 innings. He's got two wins. He's got a 1-6-2 ERA and a 0-9-2 whip. And I just do want to point out, in his last start, he went six strong, against the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, five Ks, didn't give up a run. Uh, the whip was a little high in a one, three, three, but notoriously, um, St. Louis has killed left-handed pitchers this year. And for Mr. Jeffrey Springs to go out there and do what he did against them was super impressive to me. Um, you know, and then the start before that, he did have seven Ks uh, against the uh, Texas Rangers in five innings, three sixty RA and a one, two whip. So it's a little high, but you know what? I think this kid is going to, you know, figure it out. And I think he's somebody down the stretch that, um, he might, you know, I, I do say this quite often, but, you know, look at where Tyler Alexander is now. I think this is a guy that you look back at the end of the year and, and he might be sitting there on your team and you're like, damn, Jeffrey Springs wound up having, you know, a, a pretty a pretty good year. And even last year, you know, in uh, Tampa Bay, he had a good year. He didn't really start, but, you know, he had a 3-4-3 three, three ERA, uh, 44 innings, 63 Ks and a 109 whip. So, you know, he's building off of that. Um once again, uh, what did I say? Uh, he's a uh, 57% on Yahoo, a little bit higher. But for me, I think he's somebody you got to go out there and get. Yeah, let's get to 60% at minimum. Minimum. Um, yeah, I mean, you know what? It's it's just the Rays, man. They can just they they poop out pitchers like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just absolutely scary. Um, you know why can't the Yankees do that? But anyway, uh, uh, nasty Nestor, Matt. That, that's when we got to give a little look at nasty Nestor. We, and you know what's funny? I look first back one and, since like what Clemens. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But um, uh, one thing I do I do want to say is that the Rays are kind of letting him throw. And, Actually, we didn't uh, have him. 
Yeah, yeah. And you know, the the, the Rays are kind of letting Springs throw a little bit here. And if they're letting him throw, like, look at McClanahan last year. You know, I'm not saying he's Shane McClanahan because he doesn't have that kind of stuff. But you know what? The Rays kind of know what they're doing there. They usually in my do. opinion. They usually Matt, who, do. Who, we, who we got next up, Matt? So, I mean, we're going to talk about my fantasy darling. Um, somebody that I've loved forever. Almost as much as my wife. <laughs> All right, I'll be a little dramatic. But uh, that's Ross Stripling of the Toronto Blue Jays. It looks like they're finally letting him get some innings in because he looks like he's been a middle relief. Um, his last start kind of like is what's giving me so yeah, I think, some I think excitement. It was his first, I think it was his first start on the – I'm going to fact check yeah, that, but I think it was. It, it is. So he's been – and you know what? Ross Stripling has always been getting like such a terrible break. You know, the Dodgers just used him all over the place. He got traded to, I think, the Twins before that, if I'm not mistaken. And it just didn't pan out there. And now he's on Toronto with a great team behind him. So, um, yeah, you know, I think it's it was exciting. just LA and Toronto, but uh, really, no, he got they let they set him free last year, uh, two years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, th- I don't think he's pitched for anybody else there. At least I'm not seeing it. If he has, okay, man, I just um, to, <laughs> okay, uh, I got to stop drinking. Anyway, <laughs> you know, you good, you good. So if he's starting to get that rotation spot, this is good because Ross Stripling actually has a lot of talent, and it's like set him free. Let's let's let him let's let him get a little a little trust and a little leash, and I think he's going to start really start really taking some strides because the kid has always been like a K per nine guy, and yeah, oh, he's a good pitcher. Always had a low ERA. I'm not saying he's going to have a sub th- sub three, but he's going to have a mid a mid to low three ERA. So I'm going to take that all day. So let's see how that track record goes. But I'm going to ride the wave. Yeah, with Ross Stripling here, you know, there's a couple of things that I want to say with the kid. Well, uh, this is actually his sixth start of the was his sixth start of the year, apparently. Uh, 14 games, though, on the year. It's a 365 ERA, 37 innings, 31 Ks, a 113 whip. But you know what's that? I've kind of been hitting a little bit, you know, recently here on the podcast is FIP, right? So uh-huh. once again, fielding independent pitching, guys, it, it just kind of gives you an idea of what he would do with like a neutral defense behind him. Um, and he's that's a three one six, so you know it's an ERA um comp. So uh, I think if he could even that that ERA can get a little bit lower. Those strikeouts come up a little bit, man. Uh, Ross Stripling could have himself a nice year here. Um, in twenty eighteen, he was an All Star with the Dodgers. He threw one hundred and twenty two innings, one hundred and thirty six strikeouts, a one one eight WHIP. So maybe the WHIP is going to come up a little bit, but the ERA might go down. Uh, ironically, and I think the case come up for uh, Ross Stripling. He is thirty two years old. Um. Only 9% owned on Yahoo. So they're basically, you know, basically any league right now, you can go out there and get them. And guess what? Detroit Tigers, June 12th, guys. We're giving you at least guys that you can stream for, you know, stream for, uh, you know, this week. So with Ross Stripling, guys, I'd say you go out there and you take a shot on him, at least for this week. I think he's going to go out there and he's going to do a nice little performance against uh, those Detroit Tigers. So our last starting pitcher here is going to be uh, actually a Philly, Matt, Mr. Zach Eflin. I've been hearing a lot of good things about him. I don't know if you've been hearing uh, the same uh, the same stuff over there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really a fan. I think he's an absolute. Oh, okay. He's act, he's an absolute dumpster fire, but the matchup is good. But the only thing is, by the time you guys are going to hear this play, um, this play is going to be tomorrow. So the only people that are really going to benefit is if you can add them in that moment. But yeah. um, it's a good matchup at, we, at least somewhat. Milwaukee I mean, in Milwaukee. I mean, they've been pretty good this year. And honestly, like he, if you're in a desperate pinch, he'll at least give you some case. But you know, prepare for your ERA to hurt. But I mean, if you're if you're like me right now, that has like a 22 ERA. I'm good at fantasy baseball, everybody. It's just bad here. Um, <laughs> no, he is. I can guarantee that. Matt's, yeah. Matt was the the back-to-back champion, uh, you know, a couple years back. So, you know, Matt definitely knows what he's talking about, ladies and gentlemen. I can I can definitely guarantee you that. So, I mean, but outside of that, I mean, he was supposed to be this big pitching, you know, second coming of Jesus for the Phillies, and he just outright took a, took a dump, and he's been a dump. But for this start, if you could scoop him up tomorrow, I would. Well, I'll, I'll go out there and I'll say this, Matt. I was um, I, and I, I wish I could give the credit to who it was, but there was somebody out there that I was listening to, and they were throwing out um, that Zach Eflin changed something coming into this year. I forget exactly what it was once again, but you know, numbers do look a little bit better than on the career. So on the year, uh, Mr. Eflin has a three eight eight ERA, two wins, four losses, nine starts, fifty one innings, uh, forty five strikeouts. And a one one three whip, right? So it looks like he figured out something with that whip a little bit. It's come down a lot than previous years. And once again, guys, I'm, I, I hate to do this, the advanced statistics, but a three oh four FIP. So that's an ERA indicator that maybe the three eight eight ERA is going to come down a little bit. 
Um, and once again, I think if he really has figured something out at 28 years old, maybe this is the, you know, one of the last shots that he has. So maybe he really, you know, said in the off season, I'm really going to work on, you know, finding something here. And it looks like it's clicking so far. Maybe the start against Milwaukee isn't the, you know, the one where he really, you know, blows up, uh, you know, does, does great. Cause I mean, I think that was his last time out last time out, Zach Eflin went eight strong against the angels, got the win six K's, uh, no runs and a 075 whip. So, you know, it looked pretty good there. And I think in the start after that he's going to get Miami which is a pretty good matchup they really only have um Jazz and um Mr. Jesus Sanchez but besides that you know they really don't have anybody else that's any much of a threat so I think Zach Eflin might not be the best star for tomorrow but possibly next week uh, we see where it goes so guys let's uh, wrap it up here um with a couple closers you know um one of them kind of mentioned guys we've been mentioning this guy I don't I don't know why nobody's picking him up and that's once again uh Tanner Rainey of the Washington Nationals um dude's just been he's been great so far this year um still only 46 percent owned i understand it's the washington nationals but guys you know he's got a 260 era a 115 whip seven saves 17 innings 20 strikeouts um wh what more do you do you want from a closer right uh he needs to be at least your third closer i think there's potential for him if the nationals start winning you know maybe he even becomes your number two closer so guys just go out there and snag Tan tannerini 46 percent owned man any thoughts on the kid here the only thing the indicator of why i would scoop him up right now um, outside of all the stats you read for the year, is he's he has four in the last two weeks. Yeah, exactly. So I think even though since the last time we talked about him, he got you a bunch of saves. Yeah. So I mean that, that that's it. Like you know what? Like if you if you're struggling, you need you need uh, saves right now. You just passed up on four by not scooping him up when we told you to pick him up last time. Uh, yeah. So I mean that's just where we're at right now. You want to talk about that last guy? Yeah, we got here. we got this is a, this is a desperation dart throw deep leagues. If you if you just need somebody that's going to get you a save, and that's a uh, Tanner Scott. Uh, he got the last save uh, for Miami, and um, it looks like they're using him in high leverage situations. So I mean, that's what you want to see. He's a big strikeout guy. He's got a uh, twenty strikeouts. Uh, I mean, he's got thirty one strikeouts in twenty innings. Uh, Four eight seven ERA, a one three eight WHIP. Uh, once again, that's Tanner Scott for the Miami Marlins. He got two saves on the year. So that's like you, you know your AL onlys and your your fifteen mans, even your twenty mans. You know, he's one percent owned on Yahoo, so he's probably out there and even those. What was that, man? NFBC. Yeah, NFBC. Any anywhere where it's like a league where you know you just you just need a need a guy that's gonna get you a couple saves, you know, and and you, you dump him if he's not. That's a Tanner Scott, one percent owned Miami Marlins. Uh, so you know we're gonna call it there, guys. We appreciate everyone listening. You know I'm not gonna hit you with all that mumbo jumbo that I hit at the top, but you know uh, we'll catch you guys again on Monday. Until then, see you. Peace.